President Trump has pardoned Scooter Libby. He is a former top aide to Vice President Dick Cheney, who was convicted 11 years ago of obstruction of justice and lying to the FBI. Now, the charges against him were related to the leaking of Valerie Plame's identity. She was a covert CIA officer. The White House released a statement that quotes the president as saying, I don't know Mr. Libby, but for years I have heard that he has been treated unfairly. Hopefully this full pardon will help rectify a very sad portion of his life. Now, some are questioning the timing of all of this. Since James Comey played a role in the Libby case, he was the deputy attorney general at the time who decided to appoint a special counsel to look into the leaking of Plame's identity. As the Washington Post puts it, no one was ever charged for outing Plame, but Libby was charged with federal obstruction of justice and perjury charges for lying to investigators. For more on this, let's turn to Niall Stanage. He's a White House columnist for The Hill. Now, what does the White House seek to gain, do you think, by pardoning Scooter Libby? I can certainly tell you what skeptics or critics of the White House think they hope to gain, and that is sending a message about the president's pardoning power. And that, of course, has obvious relevance to the ongoing investigation led by uh, Robert Mueller. We had similar speculation last year. You may remember that the president uh, pardoned Sheriff Joe Arpaio, uh, who had been uh, on, convicted of criminal contempt. And there was the same sense at that point that this was sending a signal to people who might otherwise perhaps fear uh, legal jeopardy or be susceptible to pressure from Mueller's team. The, the suspicion was that that the president was sending a signal that he could take care of matters for them. I want to ask you about uh, James Comey's book, since it's the number one uh, topic of discussion in Washington and elsewhere today. In it, he suggests that Hillary Clinton standing in the polls ahead of the election had some influence of his handling of the email case. He writes, quote, it is entirely possible that because I was making decisions in an environment where Hillary Clinton was sure to be the next president, my concern about making her an illegitimate president by concealing the restarted investigation bore greater weight than it would have if the election appeared closer or if Donald Trump were ahead in all polls. But I don't know, he says, end quote. How problematic of an admission is that for, for James Comey? Well, it certainly seems a candid admission and one that is somewhat against self-interest. We always place more uh, weight on things when, when they are against someone's self-interest. It seems honestly like a, like a reasonable statement to make. I mean, everyone at that time believed Hillary Clinton was the odds-on favourite to win the election. There has been a lot of reporting uh, suggesting that even the Obama administration's pushback against uh, apparent Russia and interference was uh, muted somewhat by their expectation that Hillary Clinton would win. So I, I don't think it is surprising that James Comey thought this way. I think many, many people did. The, the surprising element is more him making that admission because, of course, the FBI, as with any uh, form of law enforcement, is uh, purportedly free of both uh, political pressure and political calculation. I want to ask you about the Russia investigation. It, of course, looms large over all of this. And there's been a flurry of recent reporting about the president's anger, growing and simmering anger towards special counsel Robert Mueller and deputy attorney general Rod Rosenstein. What are your sources telling you today about how close the president may be to acting on that frustration? My sources are certainly consistent with the other reporting that you have just mentioned. The president's anger about this probe does seem to be at new highs. Where I think everyone's reporting kind of uh, diverges or where we get competing accounts is about the likelihood of the president acting upon that anger. Clearly, uh, the firing of, of uh, Rod Rosenstein, for example, would uh, provoke something very close to a constitutional crisis. There have been Republicans who have warned the president against that course of action for that exact reason. Uh, and there was a, a somewhat more conciliatory tweet yesterday sent by the president suggesting that he Perhaps his anger had passed its peak. As we all know, predicting President Trump's next move is always a little bit of a fool's errand. Exactly. And his plate is full at the moment. That We have the, the crisis in Syria, the uh, recent uh, potential alleged chemical weapons attack. You've got those horrific images of, of 
people on the ground suffering, including children. It moved the president to consider military action via a tweet, yet the administration's policies have slowed the acceptance of Syrian refugees into the U.S., if you look back and, and tally all the numbers. Is there some type of White House contradiction here? I think there is, and I'm surprised it hasn't got a little bit more attention. Uh, whatever one thinks of the United States' uh, right role in the Syrian conflict, it seems a clear contradiction to me to, on the one hand, be suggesting that the plight of Syrian civilians might require airstrikes or some other uh, direct form of military action, and on the other, suggest that refugees from that conflict should not be allowed into the United States. I don't see how one squares those two to policies. I don't see how really you can argue that that uh, bespeaks a consistent view of what is going on in Syria. Nal Stanage, great to speak with you. Joining us from our Washington Bureau. Thank you.